Hey everyone, it's Mary from SVG Cuts. I am 28 weeks along in my pregnancy, so day one of trimester three started today. So it's an exciting milestone. I'm due at the end of May with my baby girl, with my husband Tony, super pumped, can't wait to meet her, and just still kind of in shock, super excited. So today's new projects are nice and simple and easy. You could make them as a host hostess gift to bring to someone. You can make them in any color scheme, theme, whatever you want. I have easy, medium, a little more complex, but not that hard to make too. So there's three different ones. I have like a really strong affinity for beverage napkins, even though they're kind of not really super necessary, although sometimes they are. If your drink is sweating, it's nice when you're, you know, talking to people, if you're holding it, maybe if when someone gives you a napkin, technically you're supposed to get a napkin with your drink. I mean, I don't know how, how fancy you want to get with your etiquette, but just the fact that they are so cute makes me want to use them, even though I've gone a long time without really using beverage napkins. So, with that being said, I have a, a pretty big crazy collection of beverage napkins of all seasons and colors. So I thought it would be fun to make some holders for them. So I was actually this weekend I was out, I saw these daffodil ones at one of my favorite stores. It's in Geneva, Illinois. It's called The Little Traveler. They have the cutest stuff there. Leave me a comment if you've ever been to The Little Traveler. It's like to die for. It's this big sprawling Victorian house with all kinds of rooms of all kinds of goodies and stuff that you've never seen and it's just so exciting to go there. They have a little restaurant in the middle, they have some clothing, they have baby stuff which I looked at. I actually didn't get anything because I've been getting a lot of baby stuff and I still have a shower coming up so I'm trying to just scale back. She has a lot of cute outfits already though, let's just say that. <laughs> Especially um, clearance stuff like at Target. I've been getting a lot of clearance winter baby things trying to guess the right size. So anyway, I had to get these daffodil napkins. These I got at TJ Maxx. I don't know if you ever go to TJ Maxx here in the States. They have all kinds of great stuff and I sometimes find cocktail napkins in different areas of the store. I also got these at Michael's. They Currently, as of spring 2020, they have a big selection of little beverage napkins that go with this whole theme of party stuff that's really cute. And then I've also placed an order before on Caspari.com. I've bought these in person at little stores and I also got a little selection of some various ones. These are kind of like, they look plain, but they're like taffeta looking when you look at them up close. So the plain ones, go really nicely with the patterned paper in this one piece simple one. This is the basic napkin holder. It's just one piece of paper. You just fold it, glue it in four places, boom. And then if you left your napkin in the packaging, you could tie a pretty ribbon around this. And if you're going to someone's house, be like, boom, cocktail napkins in your theme or maybe for the next season ahead or the next holiday or just something pretty. So pretty inexpensive, but a nice little thoughtful semi-handmade thing that you can bring to them. I also obviously made one for these here, which I just showed you, but they also show off two sides of your paper if it's double-sided. It's kind of cute to see the other side through there. And then the next simplest one is this tilted tray napkin holder that I made. So it's, it's a little tray, but it's kind of tilted forwards, although the bottom is flat. So this one is also nice and simple to make, but you can use some other paper for the panels. For this, I used this shiny gold, but I would typically, usually probably pick patterned paper for that. You can pick whatever you want. You could do the same color and emboss it or ink it or whatever floats your boat to coordinate with your cute napkins. So especially with um, drink sweating season coming up. I'm excited to be outside and maybe just enjoy just one little cocktail or one little, one little wine cooler would be nice because it's been a nice break 
of, of being hydrated, well rested, eating healthy, not drinking anything, alcoholic. It's actually been really nice feeling so so healthy and so good. But I am looking forward to kicking back with some warm weather and, you know, just a responsible drink or two would be fun. Have have baby outside, take her for a walk, come home, chill, have a drink with my cute napkin. So um, what else? This one is a little more complicated, but like I said, also very simple. First I made it to coordinate with these napkins, which I got at TJ Maxx, and I just made it plain, which is cute. But then I got these napkins at Michael's and um, trendy, cute with the gold foil. I was like, ooh, I think we could use some panels. So I added panels to this, which really brings out the geometry of it. So this is the geometric tray napkin holder, I believe I called it. So that looks really cool with the gold mirror paper, I think. Very trendy and cute. And then I also made it with this patterned paper, which looks really pretty too, with the plain napkins from Michael's or, you know, Party City or whatever. So there it is. That's my full confession of my napkin obsession. Now you guys know all about it. And I hope you're as excited as I am about beverage napkins with cute holders. So the kind of things that delight me and probably you too if you're watching this. So I've got my pieces cut out too show you how each one goes together even though it's super simple. So let's get started. For the basic napkin holder, it's fun to feature some patterned paper. If it's double sided, you're gonna be seeing the other side. And all, all four sides are the same, so it doesn't matter which direction it's going in. And it's nice and easy and quick and economical because it is just the one sheet of paper. So I went ahead and folded all of my scored areas over, just nice and simple. Everything is a mountain fold, as they say, which means you just fold it over. And these tabs are perfectly spaced from this edge, so when it's butted up against the edge, it's nice and Perfecto. So basically all we're going to do is glue these side tabs in place first. So each one gets glued right onto its neighbor. Just like this. And then I'm just kind of getting these out of the way a little bit. And again, all four sides are the same. So I'll just put glue on that bottom tab and fold that right over. Make sure that it's kind of butted up all the way in there. And you don't want it to be folded super sharply because then it won't be making contact with the bottom. You want it to just be gently folded with some glue. And then just sort of slide it into place until it stops. Hold it for a little bit as it dries. And 
And it's a nice snug fit even in those corners. Easy peasy and lots of fun to use some pretty paper like this paper, I love. This looks really nice with this nice plain. Kind of has like a taffeta design on it. It might be hard to see with the, the plastic on it, but since the paper is busy, I think that looks really pretty with the plain napkin for a little spring little spring fling, little spring cocktail. I'm ready to sit outside myself. And nice and fun to showcase some pretty paper. You could do holidays, you could do Easter, spring, patriotic, of course, Halloween, fall, Christmas, Valentine's Day, you name it, or just a color, it's a color scheme. You want so then all you got to do is take your plastic off and put your napkins in you could even put a ribbon on it just like this and bring it as a little hostess gift pretty inexpensive but I'm sure it would be appreciated and admired for the geometric dish napkin holder it looks like this these four sides are the same and then these four sides are the same So, I cut mine this time for these pink napkins and this vibrant coral paper. And I have my panels cut out. There are four of each of my little panels and I have them stacked on top of one another. So these are the panels that are here, this one, two, three, one, two, three, there's four of each, and then this one is this here, is this, and then there's four like this, which are these right here. And then four like this, which are these four there. So I've got this vibrant, darker coral color. There's four shapes like this that are the same, as well as two shapes like this that are the same. And then a lighter coral, four shapes like this, and just a square. First, I'm going to glue these four together side to side. Just start like this, just two and two, nice and easy to still see on camera here. So what I'm going to do is glue these four in no particular order onto these points here. Along with these four like this. And then I'm not going to glue the large triangle there, but I will glue one, two, three, four
and then one, two, three, four, just like that. So go ahead and glue those down. Next, I'm going to glue these together side to side. And this fold actually should be going the other way. I almost forgot. as well as these long ones. So we want it folded like that. If you want to make it a sharper crease, you can take a tool like this. This is called a bone folder. It's used to sharpen a crease just like that. If you want to, you can do that.
next we can put these one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four, and glue those down. Next, I'm going to glue this here and this here. And then we can close up both of them like this. And close this one up like this. So next I'm gonna take one of these bottoms. These are both identical. And I'm going to glue this on the inside. So to do that, it's got one, two, three, four longer sides and then four corners. So you want to line up the one of the longer sides with your long side there. And I'll just start by anchoring one of these long sides, making sure to line up the corners there as nice as possible, as nicely as possible, and take a look from the inside, press that down. And then feed that back inside if necessary, and glue down the tab on the opposite side. And I'm just working my way around, gluing down the four long sides. And then I'll glue down the remaining tabs.
Next, I'm gonna fold these out of the way a little bit so that I can put this inside. And then I'll use these triangles to put the two parts together. So I'm just gonna glue down all of them. Probably doesn't really matter which order you go in, but I do think it's nice to probably jump across to opposite sides instead of going around in a circle. Sometimes when you go around in a circle, when you get to where you started, you find that something could be a little bit off. In this case, it would probably be fine, but it's just a general rule of thumb that I like to use. So this could even be a cute little candy dish even though it does perfectly fit beverage napkins. It would look cute with some little color coordinated candies. Some little mints or wrapped up chocolates or maybe if you had Easter paper, some little Easter candies, whatever kind of holiday candies, Halloween, Christmas, you name it. Now we can glue this inside. that's going to fit in there just right, but let's also put the bottom on. So we'll just line it up and put some glue on it. So I'm getting pretty close to the edge without being right on the edge. And just this amount of glue I think is going to be just right. So when we smoosh it down, the glue will sort of spread out a little bit and hopefully get right to the edge without, without coming out and getting all over the outside. But even if that does happen, you can just wipe it off usually. No big deal. So you can kind of feel around and line it up nicely. Press down close to the edge as it's drying. And then you can kind of gently press down from the whole top. I'm not sure why I'm swirling it around, if that really works or not. It makes me feel like it's working. So I might do this for another 30 seconds or so, and then I would be all done. And again, if you wanted to gift it just like this, you could tie a ribbon around it and bring it as a little host hostess gift, or use it yourself. For the tilted tray napkin holder, you can see it here. I've got my pieces cut out. I have these panels here, which I cut out of some gold shiny paper instead of the pink stars, and I have these shapes here, which I've gone ahead and folded like this, like this, 
ends like this. So I already folded them the way that you'll want them to be going. And just for this video so that you can see, I'll go ahead and darken in the number that your machine will have cut onto each piece. And that's there to help you identify them and glue them in order side to side easily. So you can see here how I folded piece number one and piece number two as well as three and four. So I'm, what I'm going to be doing is gluing these together. So one is going Two is going on one, then next will be three, like this, and then four. So that'll be the basic shape. That would be like if you were looking at it like this. So as long as it's flat, let's go ahead and glue, glue our panels in place. And I peeled them off the mat, just like so. With this one here, I peeled them off just like this. And even if you get them jumbled up, you can still identify them just by seeing their shapes. And they're gonna go just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and glue those down, centered nicely, just like this. So side note, if you are using shiny paper like this and you're kind of new to it, just something to be aware of is that if you do get glue on it at all, it's going to be very visible. So just keep that in mind. You know, if I was to go like this and get glue on my finger and then I rubbed it on there, you would definitely be able to see it. Not the end of the world, but something to be aware of. And this is a square, so it doesn't matter which direction you have it going in. Next, I'm going to glue the sides together.
Then before I start to close it up too much, I'm going to get these corners glued together. Next, I'm going to glue the bottom down around the edges. And then glue this final square into place using these tabs. And it's nice and flat, so it's nice and easy. So there you go. This one is cool because it's simple, it's dimensional. You can feature some patterned paper or some colors. If you have a holiday or an occasion or a party theme in mind, this looks really cool and super cute. So there you have it, new, simple, fun, quick and easy projects for any holiday season or theme. I hope you have a great time making them. If you do, you'll have to share a picture with us on Facebook, Instagram, your blog, pin it on Pinterest. However you like to share, I always love to see, and so do the rest of our crafty friends. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time, and happy crafting!